I guess. Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right. Well, friends. I believe we are yes. all prepared. I think so. Yeah, we are live. Oh my gosh! I believe currently. So, hi. How? What's up, friends? How's it going? <laughs> Hello. Good morning or afternoon. Hello. Afternoon. As I said before, this is too true. You must remember, the world has different times. I'm but from the future. We will go to. We, we will go to one time. The time of mice. <laughs> Let us uh, start with a little bit of an uh, intro to the game, as I uh, believe it's going to be important for everybody to understand what we're doing here and uh, why you see mice on screen. We are playing Mouse Guard, which is uh, a game uh, created by Luke Crane and David Peterson, uh, based on the comics by David Peterson. And if you have not read those comics, I highly recommend them. They are magnificent. And the game that they have created together is a tremendous and wonderful fun time. It is my favorite role-playing game, personally. Go to every time. Get that Dungeons & Dragons out of my face. Let's begin. The mice of the territories live under a tenuous existence because these mice are simply mice. They only have human intelligence and empathy that we have and nothing else besides their mousy nature that allows them to survive. Dodging snakes, foxes, and other terrible uh, predators that uh, basically prey on mice 24-7, they have not lived a good existence running, hiding, and not being able to settle into a safe and productive lifestyle. And that is because there is nothing there to protect them and to fortify their uh, the hovels that they were living in. Until the Mouse Guard, a faction of noble and proud scientists, soldiers, and scouts created essentially this incredible group of mice that would basically give their lives to ensure that every mouse has an opportunity to live a fulfilling and happy life. And that is what all of you are going to be. You are going to be uh, members of the Mouse Guard. Mm -hmm. I would like to go around now and have each of you introduce yourself, introduce your character, tell us what their belief is, as well as their instinct, and I would also like you to tell us why they joined the Mouse Guard. My name is Four. I will be your Mouse Master this day, and I would like to start with Courage. Hello! Because, uh, because gosh darn. Okay. Start. Um, yes, I'm Emma, and I will be playing Courage, the Tenderport, um, which means that they're a young mouse, and they are just joining uh, the Mouse Guard. Um, so the reason... That's right, because they're a Tenderpaw! Yeah! They're, they're, they're a Tenderpaw, one. right? That's the... Yeah, that's, that's the new recruits. Yes. And it's good because I'm also a new recruit to this game, so I don't have to pretend like I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, great, so um, the reason that Courage is joining the Mouse Guard is because their brother was in the Mouse Guard, but he got injured. He was a really good guard mouse and he really looked up to him and he couldn't be a guard anymore, so he's going to take his place and protect the family, um, which leads great really right into their belief, which is, I do my best to protect those who cannot protect themselves. Um, but the thing is, uh, Courage wasn't really, I don't know, he wasn't really gearing up to be a mouse, 
uh, a mouse guard for very long, so he's pretty scared of a lot of stuff. So his instinct is sort of, even though I'm scared, I stand my ground in the face of danger. So yeah, that is my mouse, and I love him. Magnificent. Um, let's <laughs> go ahead and go down to uh, BG Gameworks. Tell us about Kira. To unmute. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Mitra B, uh, mm-hmm. BG Gameworks. Uh, my mouse is Kiara. She is a um, guard mouse, so a little bit above Tinderfoot or Tinderpaw, but not quite super out there yet. Um, she. I will say, be- uh, if oh, sorry, if you're a guard mouse, you have earned your cloak. You are officially in the mouse guard. You no longer have to worry about that whole, you know. I hope I I hope I get my promotion. But we're still trying to figure out who's going to be the leader. So we we haven't figured that part out yet. Uh, her belief: uh, it's better to stand and fight now than to leave trouble to sneak up on you later. Um, and her yeah. instincts are: well, people who are laughing aren't fighting. So if you're making <laughs> people laugh, they're not trying to kill you. <laughs> It's a good, it's a good instinct, especially when the chips are down. And uh, why do you uh, think uh, Kara joined the Mouse Guard? Um, her, her parents were smiths. Uh, she grew up with uh, with the armory, so she grew up with tales and, and watching the, the stuff she, she made go out and, and become... Uh, used by the mouse guard, and so she said, hey, I want to do that, too. Most excellent. And we shall continue this clockwise trend. Will, tell us about Heathcliff Moss. Hi, I'm Will. I, I'm Actually, my name is Guillermo. I usually go by Will online, but I'm going by my actual name. Guillermo and uh, my mouse uh, Heathcliff. Um, he was born being escorted by a guard mouse patrol, and he was born uh, on a heath area. That's why he's Heathcliff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, making coffee this morning was very productive for storytelling. Um, <laughs> he's a guard mouse. Yay! And his parents were apiarists, and he's an uh, insectarist. He believes that uh, others' opinions are more important or higher than his own. And his instinct is that the guard code provide, uh, provides all the answers, provides the right answers, always. Nice. Right. And lastly, Distracted Elf. Yes, hello. I'm Distracted Elf. Uh, the mouse I will be playing for this fine game is Moira. She is a uh, like a, a scientist healer uh, guard mouse. Um, very smart, very nervous, very shy. Uh, I imagine her wearing like tiny glasses and and you know always carrying lots of books around, that kind of thing. Um, she joined the mouse guard because. Oh, I, I didn't even think of this before this, but she joined the Mouse Guard probably because uh, there's a lot of people who are willing to take up a sword, but there's the consequences of swords that also need to be dealt with, and that's, you know, like, finding wounds and making sure people are okay and what have you. Um, her belief is that there's yes, always the a way mouse to figure guard it just... out. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Keep going. There's, there's always a way to figure it out. I think I'm a little bit of a um, delay, sorry. Her belief is that there's always a way to figure it out with violence, and her instinct is to always wait shyly for someone else to speak first. We had a little bit of that instinct, sadly. <laughs> Lie. Oh gosh. And let's see. I think I think that's it. Unless you guys have any immediate questions, uh, we can go ahead and start. No, I'm good. I do have one question. Okay. Is it okay that I've given What's... my mouse a little thimble helmet and a little needle sword? Yes. I will uh, give you guys uh, later on an idea on what equipment you can uh, give your guards mice 
or tender paw. Uh, because I am totally sold on little thimble, thimble hat. And yeah. from there, I think we're all set. So, let us dive in. The year is 1154, and the Mouse Territories has just endured a rather gentle winter, in fact. However, the years have not been kind to the territories, having just recovered from a war with the uh, Weasels of Dark Heather far to the west. Uh, that was in 1149 in the uh, torrential snow of the winter of that year. And ever since, the mice have been trying to recover the Mouse Guard being the uh, the key force that was instrumental in defeating the Weasels of Dark Heather has been building its ranks. And for three of you, you have successfully joined uh, and earned the privilege to wear the cloak of the Mouse Guard. And that cloak is dyed and colored uh, in some fashion to represent you. So if you, if you have an idea for what sort of color really brings out your mouse, uh, keep that in mind. It is chosen by your mentor once they've decided, yes, this mouse can hold a sword. They can help the mice of the territories. And I would just like to go ahead and before we actually enter spring, I want us to take a little step back into the tail end of winter. Courage, there is a ceremony <gasps> for tender paws when they are given the right to enter a patrol of the mouse guard. And you stand along with many of your fellow tender paws. You do not have a cloak. You will not earn a cloak until you have impressed upon your mentor that you are capable of upholding the oath of the mouse guard. I okay. would like you to repeat after me as you, along with all of your tender paws, take the guard's oath. <clears throat> and I imagine the rest of you are present just because this is a very important ceremony for the mouse guard, and it's led by your matriarch, Gwendolyn, who begins as such. We as guard offer all. We as guard offer all that we are to protect the sanctity of our species that we are to protect the sanctity of our species the freedom of our kin the freedom of our kin and the honor of our ancestors and the honor of our ancestors with knowledge sword and shield we do these deeds with knowledge, sword, and shield, we do these deeds. Never putting a lone mouse above the needs of all. Never putting a lone mouse above the needs of all. Or the desire of self above another. Or the desire of self above another. We strive for no less than to serve the greatest good. Strive for no less than to serve the greatest good. And with that, you are inducted into the Mouse Guard officially. The rest of you have taken oh this gosh. oath as well, and it has always been present in your mind as you set out each year to tackle new dangerous opportunities to see that the Mouse Guard upholds this oath and that all mice know this tremendous burden that you undertake. Mmm, coffee. Lockhaven. Lockhaven is the home of the Mouse Guard, sitting in the center of the territories. It is a citadel, strongly fortified, set into uh, an ivy riddled uh, collection of rocks. And it is equipped with not only a very strict regiment of guards mice always at the ready to defend the walls of 
Lockhaven, but also to provide and essentially they have an awesome apiary. There is a buzzing beehive right above all of this intense structure, um, keeping a supply of delicious honey for all of you during the winter. And as spring is ushered in, you begin to see the life of Lockhaven flee into the wilds of the territories. There are common mice to defend. There are paths that must be blazed. And there is also mail to be delivered. All of you, at one point or another, are summoned to the office of the matriarch Gwendolyn. And I would like each of you to enter her office, describe your mouse, what's their fur color, what's their cloak color, and just give us a little intro into uh, who they are at a glance. Um, who is likely to arrive first? I, I don't think Moira I almost is ever late it's... anywhere. Yeah, I, I, don't, oh, I don't think she's ever late, and it's like very nervous way before she's supposed to be there that she arrives. Um, so um, whoever we're reporting to is probably still doing whatever work they had before this, so when she sort of bar barges in or at least opens the door, uh, kind of like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, but I, I, wait, no, I'm not, but I'm just gonna wait quietly here in the corner. Thanks. And, like, she shuffles over and, like, sits down and, like, waits for the rest of everybody to arrive. She, like, adjusts her little lap a little bit and, and pulls her maroon cloak around her, um, closer, staff leaning on her shoulder. Um, her sort of tufty brown fur, clearly, like, she got up in the morning and she has the equivalent of, like, mouse bedhead. Um, uh, and, and, and she's, like, reading some paper that she's got with her uh, about, I don't know, it's probably like the Daily News or something um, from the, the archivist's office. I don't know. Oh, excellent. Nicely. Um, the, the, the mouse guard zine. <laughs> and, uh, the Daily Mouse. Who would, who would come next? Hey. I think Heathcliff, you seem be... to be a, a stickler to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heathcliff, Heathcliff walks in. He's uh, slightly below average mouse height and size. Uh, gray mousy fur and uh, white paws. Uh, both hands and feet are white. Uh, nickname, they used to call him Socks, but that didn't really stick. Um, he has a golden colored um, cape, uh, like a light yellow mustard uh, honey color. Uh, he carries a staff with a honey dipper in the top. And he walks in and uh, sees uh, Moira. Um, he doesn't really know Moira yet, but nods and just waits to be called. All right. And we would like our last guard mouse to arrive. Yeah, uh, Kira uh, shows up um, still a couple of minutes before, but like much closer to like actual time. Um, she's a sleek uh, black mouse with a uh, kind of a royal bluey kind of colored ape. Um, she's fairly confident in herself, kind of carries herself, you know, uh, big. Um, uh, but yeah, she walks in, snaps a uh, uh, snappy salute, and uh, looks around, sees the other two. You wanted to see us, ma'am? And uh, I will actually go ahead and say, yes, uh, Gwendolyn ushers all of you into her office, uh, beaming that all of you are so prompt. Gwendolyn is a blonde furred mouse wearing these uh, bright blue robes. And uh, entering her office is, you know, you guys have done it before. You've been on patrols for probably a year now since you've become guards mice. And just as she's about to shut the door, uh, Courage, you arrive. Ah! Hello. Hello. I am Courage. She says. <laughs> Hello, Courage. I have a... I have a needle. Right. Right. I'm ready to... Her heart... Gwendolyn's heart breaks. It's... It's... It's every tender <laughs> pot ever, and she's so proud. 
Um, <laughs> she ushers you in. Uh, what's your mouse's fur color? I'm like a little like a gray, but like you know, like gray blue kind of. Like how like some like oh, spaniels really? have that bluish color. <laughs> My dog looks like that, so I chose that. <laughs> fun, fun. You, I'm a fan. And you don't have your cloak yet. Badly. Well, Gwendolyn uh, ushers you in, and uh, all of you uh, take a seat at the uh, at this uh, large wooden table that is the centerpiece of her office, and uh, she uh, circles around it. You see that Gwendolyn's office is a not cluttered, but it just has lots of information. There are bookshelves riddled with scrolls, maps, and other uh, information that you probably could gleam in a week. You see that <laughs> the map spread across this uh, large grand table is of the territories. It shows you where Lock Haven sits, and you see that it is littered with little uh, mouse tokens designating where certain patrols are heading out to do whatever mission that they are on. You also see a halberd hanging on the wall. Gwendolyn's weapon of choice, always at the ready should she ever need it. But you also see one last little tidbit, a steaming kettle of dandelion tea, with which she pours herself a tall glass. <laughs> Would anybody care for some? It is morning. No, 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 I, I already, um, I've been up for a while. Very well. In fact, uh, I'm just getting I ready wouldn't to... mind. Do I, should I say yes? Glass, I look, I look to whoever looks like do you the most this to person one of in the, the room. <laughs> I, I think I have to go to Kiara and say, do, do I say yes? Should I get more cups, ma'am? <laughs> Absolutely. And she has them at the ready. This seems to be a fashionable thing to do for each troll that comes in. And she sits down and simply, you know, does that, that little mouse thing where her whiskers do a little twitch. It's a little bit of a, an annoying gesture because there is one chair in this room that is not filled, sitting empty, and she seems reluctant to start this this meeting, this summons, until she finally goes, well, it's clear, I hope to all of you, that you'll be a, um, a new patrol for our spring, which is, I suppose you must be glad to get out of Lockhaven for once. Yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever the guard needs, ma'am. Glad to hear it. Well, your troll leader is, I expect, going to be a while. So, let's simply lay down the facts. It's spring. That means there are plenty of things to do. Thankfully, it's going to be a hot one. And that means we get to spread some of the Lockhaven joy around. Ideally, with honey. I'll be sending uh, a lot of you down south. You will have to uh, deliver one of, one, yes, one for each of these towns, and she gives you the list of towns that you will need to deliver your honey pots to. Let me actually put it in the chat here for you. Boop. All right. Please make sure that each one gets to its proper location, Ivydale, Copperwood, Dory Gift, and Applewall. Once you're done with that, I expect you to return here promptly. Let's, let's, let's be honest, this is mainly to upkeep the roads, as well as to show our good faith to the towns of territories. And that is when the door to Gwendolyn's office opens. And in walks a broad-shouldered mouse, large and unkempt. He has that similar bedhead that you described, 
but um, he is otherwise walking with a gait that is both tired and reluctant, perhaps? This mouse uh, is gray in color and wears a uh, burgundy cloak and settles down into his seat. You see that there is a shield strapped to the back of his uh, cloak, as well as a thick and heavy blade sitting in its sheath at his side. He slumps back in his chair. Good morning. Morning. And Gwendolyn folds her paws in front of her and says, This is your patrol leader, Samson. It's good to see you this morning. And he says, Same. So, guard mouse, tender paw, no, no patrol guard, right? And Gwendolyn says, No, no, you will just need these three and ensure that uh, Courage here gets a good first trip into the territories as an official guard's mouse. You must be very excited. My name's Courage and I have a needle. Yes. You do. That'll be useful, no doubt. Uh, ma'am. Samson lets out a long sigh and says, all right, then. No, when Where? should we leave? And she says, oh, as soon as you are prepared, which I expect will be by the end of uh, the hour. <clears throat> and he shrugs. Well, um, Samson, you can uh, go wrangle the, the beetles for them in the you know intervening time. Uh, all of you will meet Samson at the beetle stables, and you'll leave Lock Haven uh, when you're ready. And Samson shrugs, stands up, looks at all of you and says, Don't be late. Last thing I want is a slow start to spring. And he uh, begins to mosey on part. out. Oh, what's that? Uh, I, I was just wondering, um, su- supply-wise, I mean, uh, sir, ca- Captain, sir, I have the list of uh, where, where we're headed. Um, wrote it down. It's all good. Um, but we need the honey. We're supposed to deliver. Where should we pick that up? The apiarists will bring it down, put it in a cart for us. We strap the beetles to it, and we whip the beetles until they pull it to the next town. We don't need anything else, as far as I'm concerned. Got it. Don't bring. Oh. Don't don't show up with a suitcase. Show up with dignity. We're not going on a vacation here. Everything we need is out there in the wild. That's the first thing all you should need... learn, Courage. Yep. All we need are beetles and a can-do nice. attitude. Uh, Alright, well, if we're and done the... here, um, I, I suppose I'll go get ready. Good. And Samson leaves. Um, do the rest of you leave? Or do you have any questions I'm... for Gwendolyn? I'm out of there, like, immediately after Samson. Awesome. I think I stay for an uncomfortable amount right. of time. <laughs> Just a little bit longer than you're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, Kira. Mm. Gwendolyn uh, Kira holds up a paw to you and asks... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. She, uh... Kira, you are... Uh, Gwendolyn looks to you and says, Would you mind hanging back for a moment, Kira, please? Of course, ma'am. Uh, Heathcliff. Courage. You are free to leave. Thank you, ma'am. Come on, guard. And as the door closes, and... And then I leave. Nicely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gwendolyn, uh, her shoulders, you realize that she's been tense the entire time that Samson was in this office with you all. And you notice she visibly, like, relaxes. and She sort of sinks down, and she says... I've looked at a lot of your previous missions, 
well as your attitude. I'm very impressed by it. Thank you, ma'am. And that is why I would like you to perhaps take the role of a mentor for courage. But I would rather you treat it as more of a steward. You know how tender paws can be when they're a little bit too excited. We were all excited once, ma'am. But you might have noticed someone who's not excited. Samson. He looked like he could use a nap. Or six. He has had a nap. He's had the entirety of winter to recover from a mission that unfortunately resulted in the death of his entire patrol. He is the only survivor. That does tend to sour one's disposition. I'm telling you this because I know you're a capable and well-reasoned mouse. You don't have to worry. It was nothing to do with his leadership. It was a mission to the scent border to help reforge that thing that keeps us all safe. And this is a piece of information that is very important for all of you. The mouse territories are reinforced with a scent border. It is literally a stinky concoction by the mouse of by the mice of spruce tuck that keeps away most of the more large and horrifying predators like wolves and foxes from entering the mouse territories. This is what keeps the the territories productive and capable of progressing as far as they have in terms of stabilizing their towns and other otherwise keeping uh, their food stores um, well stocked for each winter. And she says, the mission was a success, but it resulted in a very harrowing return journey. Just want you to be aware that he he may be a bit difficult at times. I'll do what I can, ma'am. Good. You're dismissed. And good luck out there. She gives you a smile. Snap this, yep, she snaps the salute, heads out. All right. All of you, I would like you to write a goal for this session. You have your mission. Deliver honeypots to Ivydale, uh, Copperwood, Dory Gift, and Apollon. But okay. what do you want to accomplish in that time? I am now going to tell you about how to play Mouse Guard. Mouse Guard is a game that has very simple rules. Let's say you want to build a chair. Gosh darn, I'm a carpenter. I'm going to build a good chair. Mm -mm -mm. I have a carpenter of four. So you see on your character sheet, you have a number next to your skill. This is how you play Mouse Guard. I tell the GM, I would like to build a chair. And the GM says, what kind of chair? And you say, well, this chair is going to be the best chair in the entire village. I'm going to give this chair to the mayor, and he's going to give me money. Ah, that's going to be an obstacle <laughs> three. That means I need to roll three successes. Whenever I tell you you have an obstacle, that means how many successes you have to get in order to succeed. Otherwise, you fail. And how do we determine success and failure? Let's roll some dice. So you see, Ooh. I rolled three, six, four, and four. One, two, and three, those are snakes. We don't like one, twos, and threes. Those are failures. We don't get anything from those. Four, five, and six, those are successes. We desperately want those. Turns out I rolled exactly the amount I needed to build that chair. And wouldn't you know it, I will represent that chair to the mayor and I will be famous. Hurrah, it's I did it! It's the mayor chair. Yes. And there you go. Ugh, that's how you play Mouse Guard. Bam. Except there is one more detail. As we start this mission, we're going to enter the GM's turn. It is my turn. And as the Mouse Master, it is my job to challenge you. 
I look at your beliefs and I look at the mission and I say, how can I bring those two in conflict? How can I just make it so the players don't just walk into success? It is your job to roll your skills to circumvent and overcome the challenges that I put in your path. After you complete your mission, we have what's called the player's turn. That means each of you gets one check to basically do whatever you want. You can recover from some of the horrifying things I've done to you if you happen to fail. You can try to improve your skills, perhaps. Make that chair that I told you about. Or make friends in a local town and such. That's really up to you. So what I would like you to do now is to go ahead and write a goal. Do you want to deliver the honeypots? Do you perhaps want to discover more about Samson's patrol? Or do you simply want to stab something with your needle? <laughs> I don't know. But um, here's here's what I'm going to do. Um, courage. You, hello. I'm going to give you the light armor. <laughs> yes, hello. Cool. I'm going to give you light armor because of your your special little thimble. And Yay. light armor is going. I'll tell you if I'll tell you if you need to reference your light armor. Um, okay. Because that's only in conflicts. Conflicts are a little bit more complicated. I'm also going to give cool. you the sword. That's going to be your little yeah, your little stabby. So just make sure that in in your character sheet you know that you have light armor and you have sword. Okay. Uh, what about the rest cool. of you? What weapons or armor do you have? We do have heavy armor as well. And there's these are the only two armors, heavy and light. Look at that! Look at that buff armor. Drunk mouse. But yeah, uh, I know I know Moira. You had a staff, and he you yes. had a staff too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and My here is a, an archer, Thank I think. Oh, archer is so good! I'm so proud of you. <laughs> okay, so make sure that you have a bow. And wow, this is gonna be great. All right, uh, what do you, do you guys do anything before you leave Lockhaven? I have a question. Yes. Um, my staff. I was thinking. I don't. I've been playing D and D too much, so I don't know if this is actually a thing that you can do a mouse card. But I was thinking that the the dipper and top one, I can break or remove the honey dipper and have a spear. Oh, oh, oh that's cool. This you know what? I really love that. Go ahead and mark down a spear. Take the How, now, the yeah. only thing like you have a... to keep track of... Yeah. I think that's so cool. Here's the thing, though. Um, in conflicts, you can only use one type of weapon per volley. I don't think we'll get into a conflict just yet, so just make sure you know that you have a freaking awesome staff slash spear. That's awesome. That's so cool. cool. Um, I think that's it. Uh, do you guys want to do anything else before you head out? Um, Should we tell you our goals? Yes, let's uh, share our goals. If if you are, are you all ready for your goals? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I okay. think so too. Um, um, you seem eager, courage. What's your goal? <laughs> courage is gonna make friends with everyone. <laughs> Can that be a goal? Uh, wait, wait, everyone? Including mm -hmm. Samson. You know who that includes. <laughs> including Samson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. If you insist. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so Moira's goal, yeah. Moira's goal is don't make a fool of herself with people of note in the village. Oh, man. You'll do great, I'm just sure. You gotta deliver the honey, right? So, I don't know. There'll be people to talk to. It's, you guess. just gotta deliver honey. That's it. Honey, honey. Mm. Uh, Kira's is before um, we, we complete this mission, I'm gonna make Samson laugh. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Okay. That's a good. That's a good belief. No goal. Excuse me. Goal <laughs> works under your instinct too. I know, right? Hmm. All right. And I have no Heathcliff goal. Moss? Have no idea what to 
Set us a goal. Blank. What's your belief? I mean, my belief is others' opinions are higher than my own, so... Uh, but that's more of a upbringing, so maybe make my voice heard at least once. Oh. Okay. I like that. I really like that, especially because each of you are a guard mouse. You, you might be looking for opportunities for, you know, letting yourself shine in some instances. I like that goal. So yeah, you make your voice heard at least once. I like that. That's a good goal. Now, remember, goals can be accomplished in the GM's turn or the player's turn. And you don't get any negative things if you don't complete your goal, so don't worry. Other than that, I think we're prepared to begin the journey. The GM's turn has begun. You all meet Samson at the Beetle Stable. It is just before the gates of Lock Haven. And you see that Samson has already hooked up uh, four, four beetles to a rather large um, caravan. Inside this cart is uh, four very large pots of honey. These clay pots are sort of lashed together um, two by two and reinforced with uh, some woven reeds and I, I, I think I think uh, you're all ready to go um, firstly uh, this is going to here? oh go ahead uh, because of the apiaries and insectuaries background can I check that everything is securely lashed and that the uh, beetles are appropriately cared for for the trip is that a thing i actually want you to roll your insectrist i was going to actually bring this up um you somebody has to lead the beetles so guess what you can do that if you like. what's your insectrist okay. i'm a uh, insectrist three all right three now these are beetles and according to the factors your obstacle is going to be obstacle three Ooh -hoo. So and this is a long journey. Now here's what I'll here's add to this. Hmm. That's right. So um, you can get helping dice. Remember that carpenter example with the chair? If somebody also happened to have carpenter, they could help with that carpenter check. Or you could just simply say, I have a skill or a wise that could assist in this role. Does anybody have a skill or wise that they think would assist in this insectrist check? Uh, persuader. That's I what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> we could all just uh, like, talk uh, to, like, to the beetles. You're going to talk to the beetles and persuade them to do a good job? You guys can do I will it. Say I this. believe in you all. That's so cute. I will say this. Lore Mouse is uh, the skill used to communicate with other uh, animals other than mice. Um, oh, I do have that. Fortunately, I don't think Persuader... Ooh! Do you yeah. do you want to use that? Myra has Lore Mouse. Okay. She'll help you out. Cool. Uh, I, I, I will... God bless Abby... Okay, I have to pause because Abigator Frenzy and Paladin Hulk are doing the one thing I don't want them to do. Courage, do you happen to have the laborer skill? Yes, I have two. <laughs> two laborer. Yeah. Um, what, laborer what? is the best what? skill for helping. <laughs> oh, it turns out the tender paw <laughs> has the best wise and the best skill to give helping dice with. My um, brother was because really Because guess what? You're the tender paw. Much. <laughs> You're a hard worker. Yes. Um, so. Moira is going to use Loremouse to help uh, refer to ways that you can help guide these uh, beetles. And courage, you're going to push them, <laughs> I guess. Yeah! I want, I'm going to push them. Um, Hira, do you have anything that might help? Oh my gosh, this is great. Uh... Probably not. Uh, I, I guess I, I have 
Mm. Well, they, they was like, I have Pathfinder, so maybe I'm trying to find the best way to, to keep them from, uh, to make their path the easiest to, to get from here to there. That is exactly how you want to use your skills and wises. You want to find a narrative hook to use your skills in a situation. So this is very neat. Let's go ahead and give you three helping dice. And your Insectress as well makes this a six. So all you have to do is type slash die 66. One moment though. What are your traits? Mm -hmm. oh. uh, my traits are Defender and Weather Sense. Weather Sense. I don't know if those help you in this instance, but I will tell you guys this next rule of the Mouse Guard. It is possible to use your traits to help your character with a one dice. So, you, if you were defender, you could say. Character with traits as well. I assume so, right? Mm. Like, if you have a trait that's not. Uh, good traits for can it, only right? be. Exactly, traits can only be used to help or hinder. So you can add one to your roll or subtract one to your roll. I know what you're thinking. Four. Why would I want to subtract a dice? <laughs> Guess what? You remember that player's turn. You get an extra check to do whatever you want for the player's turn if you use it against yourself. You can only help yourself with a trait once per session. So if you do help yourself, you gotta make sure it counts. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Do you want to use anything or do you think, uh, do you think your six dice are enough to lead these beetles forward? I was going to make a case for weather sense, but if it's only once and we're traveling, I'll save. I'll save it for later. All and hopefully, right, then. double the amount is enough, which it isn't, but hopefully it is. Lovely. Well, go ahead and do your slash die sixty six, and we shall see if you. That's four. most potent. Hell yeah. So, looks good. go ahead and on your, uh, somewhere on your character sheet, uh, unfortunately, Fantasy Grounds does not have a mouse guard module available, uh, mark that you passed with your Insectress. Just put like a 1P somewhere to let you know that your character has passed an Insectress test. Ooh, that's so because exciting. that's how you level up in this game. Yeah, you, if you, you level up your skills, by testing passes and fails. And that's important. If you're able to get the exact number of passes that your skill has, and you get the uh, exact number of passes minus one in failures, you level up your skill. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, if I wanted to level up labor for courage, I would need two passes and one fail. That's how that works. It would go up to three. Okay. I get you. So, I believe that we are able to leave Lockhaven with no, no harassment from these beetles. They are well trained, you realize, Heathcliff. And as they begin to trudge along the, uh, the, the this damp spring day, so it's still quite early in the morning, um, you begin to walk along the roads of the territories, stretching forth into, unfortunately, some dark places. And that is because these roads are not well kept since winter rushed in, smothered them with snow, and you begin to find that the road becomes rather muddy at times. And the cart's wheels struggle here and there, but otherwise, you all are able to, to make it to your first destination, Ivydale. Ivydale is a town that is sort of tucked away into this massive heap of ivy that just curls around the entirety of the town. And uh, you get the impression that Ivydales are very, they're very insulated. 
And uh, Samson, uh, sort of, during this whole journey, looks to all of you and uh, says, oh, we're going to drop this first one off. We're not going to stay in chit-chat, all right? got business out there, okay? Yes, sir. Three more destinations. Okay. But what, but what sure. if they're really friendly? Okay, never mind. It's not our job to be friendly. <laughs> well, and, okay, uh, let's go. Oh. He, he hesitates only for a moment to regard courage. And then, mm -hmm. uh, as you enter this ivy-choked valley... Um, you enter this, uh, this town. Now, the, the town is sort of made up of several different, uh, communities, and, uh, you reach what is essentially, uh, the, the town center for imports, and you're greeted by, uh, I'd say a post mouse, like a postmaster, who, uh, has several, uh, labor mice, uh, get the honey pot from you. They gently unwrap it from its uh, partner pot, and they begin to wheel it away. And uh, they give. Uh, you see that Samson is given a rather profuse uh, gratitude, which he simply takes with a silent nod and says, it's "Only doing our duty. It's just honey." I have to make celebration out of honey. Ooh. All right, we're heading out before dark. Trying to make camp, and you guys have been traveling for uh, the better part of the morning and afternoon. And Samson is pushing you to travel deeper into the evening. This means Myra has, Myra I'm has going definitely to need a scout. Been... Oh no. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Four? Oh gosh. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hello? I can hear you. I can hear you. I just I can can't. hear you. I'm not moving. Oh, yeah, your um, frozen, video yeah. is frozen. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no, we've lost them. Well, I will. Mutiny! <laughs> Mutiny immediately! <laughs> Doodles. This immediately <laughs> became a burning wheel. I can't right now. I can see the base from what I did. <laughs> <laughs>
alive. Tragedy. Tragedy. We're alive. We're back. Hello. Finally. Yes. Hello. Well, thank you. Us. My my gratitude to encounter roleplay. My apologies. Um, let's go ahead and pick up right where we left off. Samson tells all of you, we're not staying for, you know, a chit chat where we got a mission to complete. And you guys do know that it's getting dark. Samson, however, is going to push you onwards until we, 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 until we reach Copperwood. <laughs> um, until we so reach here's what I need from you guys. Copperwood. Mm. I'm going to need a Pathfinder check because oh. he doesn't want to take a trail. He wants to go off trail because it's going to be faster to just go straight through. So you can mm -hmm. see on your map, there's like Ivydale has different roads, but he just wants to go straight through. I have So someone is going three. to have to blaze a trail. Mm. I have a What about the rest of you? Um, what's what's your question? Is that good? My question is, uh, how late into the day is it? How long did it take us from Lock Haven to Ivydale? You guys left Lock Haven probably around like 10 o'clock a.m. and it is now probably uh, 4 p.m. I believe. Mm, I remember the map, aka I have the picture. And I know that it is <laughs> more difficult than that. So I would like to do, uh, do my goal, actually, and make sure that the <gasps> beetles don't move. Oh! They don't move? It, they stubbornly refuse to move forward. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. So, you guys leave Ivydale, and Samson um, begins to notice the beetles aren't really going as fast as he would like. Um, he doesn't notice that you're the one behind it, but he continues to push them forward, and at one point, he grabs you, Courage, and says, Grab the one on the left. And he he grabs okay. the reins for each of them and he starts dragging them forward. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. They and don't he seems seem very he seems very frustrated. Uh they don't seem to uh. want to move. Well I was hoping they would keep up a good pace. And he sort of kicks one. And he says, oh, no. we have to make camp. I protect the beetle. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're, maybe they're tired. We can let's, all let's... use a break. Uh, yeah, we'll, fine. Go. we'll get up bright and early in the morning. We'll get up bright and early in the morning. You're not make some tea. The point was to make move tea. while it's dark. I wanted to move while we were dark when we were farther away from Lock Haven, but I guess we have to. You! You! And he points at Moira. Scout! Make sure this area is clear. Uh, uh, uh yes, yes, sir. Uh, will do. And, uh, he looks no. to you, Kira, and he no. says, Start getting camp ready. And uh, now I need uh, a scout check and a survivalist check. So, it's going to be a scout. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to make it a versus test. So, um, here's what I'll do first. I'll do the survivalist check first. It's just going to be an obstacle three survivalist, which is making, oh, camp, I, I went, making sure you have ahead, water... Though. I, I rolled. Oh, Jake. really? Yeah, so I got a one. Ooh. Okay. So one thing I definitely want to point out is don't forget that you can get helping dice. And also, don't forget that you can use your traits for and against yourself. 
And because you rolled, I'm going to go ahead and make a roll myself. Do it. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Here we go, kids. 5d6. Roll them. Whoa, boy. Do. Yep, I got three successes. So, mark a failure for your scout check. Sure thing. And I would like to see that survivalist check. Who would like to do survivalist? I don't. I can't. I can't do it. Uh, I can. Okay. Um, okay. Make uh, a survivalist. Uh, my survivalist is three. So I guess what are we trying to do? Is it just right now? You're just building a shelter, so it's probably going to be like obstacle two. Okay. I can help with that. I have a rival list. Okay. So after I make sure that Samson didn't hurt the beetle, I'll uh, help you out. Alright. Can I use my laborer skill to also help? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I won't, I won't sure. Go. No, 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 you want to give helping dice. Okay, cool. You want to then give helping dice. I follow yes. Kira around very closely. Okay. That's 5d6. If you just type 5d6. Oh, uh, die. Slash, slash, slash die 5d6. Ah, yeah. yeah. Slash die space 5d6. That's uh, three. Four. Yep, four. You got three. 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 Oof, oh, my goodness. Okay. So you're going to be able to create a shelter that is both hidden and protecting for you and your patrol and the beetles. I, I imagine like you have to make like a fence for uh, these four beetles that keep crawling up and out and over, and Beetle they're just fence. like <laughs> beetle fence. Oh, man. Dude, come on, like don't work with, work with me here. <laughs> I'm like talking to the beetles. <laughs> if you keep crawling <laughs> out. You never know what's going to happen out there. It's going to be weird. They're going to be strangers. <laughs> it's going to be bad. You stay inside the fence. You get some nice leaves. <laughs> and we fight. Just, just stop crying out. They start, I, they I will start. actually... One of them... One of them sticks to your cape. <laughs> <gasps> and it won't let go. <sighs> oh, he's it's different to that... you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I'm the <laughs> Mora, I... you return. Oh, can you what? I was gonna say, can I try and make my? Can I try and make friends with Samson? Please. Uh, that sounds like something you have to do much. on your player's turn. Oh right. Okay, I mean, you're being very helpful. That. Yeah, okay. you're being very helpful. Okay. So you're like helping the patrol and corralling the beetles. Okay, I'm happy with um, that. Moira, you wait. come back from your uh, from your scout scouting mission. Um, you're not you're you're Bruce Tech, and I imagine you did not do a lot of patrolling. You were more of the kind of uh, I'm going to find like a solution in the books. There's a solution in. You know, yeah, my, not exactly, my brain with all this. It's not knowledge. exactly a, a, what do you call it? Um, you know, experienced patrol mouse. Her parents are both archivists, so, you know, she, she has a similar way of doing yeah. things. And uh, being ordered to do this, it's a little frustrating. Um, and as you're uh, marching around, I'm going to inflict a condition on you. Now, here's the thing. You rolled this by yourself, so guess what? Um, you get to... You're the only one that suffers the consequences. You're going to be hungry and thirsty. Alrighty then. And that means if you ever get to into a conflict, you are unfortunately going to be imposed with a minus 1D to uh, your disposition. And that's what we'll get into later, but 
I'm going to just go ahead and say this uh, trek is a fruitless scouting mission. You know that you guys are, you know, close enough to Ivydale that people patrol, and you also know that uh, it's dark enough so that the only thing you really have to watch out for are maybe like a spider or like an owl or something like that. Um, but just the fact that you have to march on and on just to try to make sure Samson is appeased leaves you rather parched and rather hungry. And conditions are things that you most of the time cannot recover from until uh, the player's turn. Okay, nope. They require a check. So, uh, all of you see this, and Samson looks to all of you as you assemble at camp, and he says, all right, bright and early tomorrow morning, we set out, we blaze through copper wood, and we get farther down to Dory, Dory Grift. All right? Yes, sir. Aye, Captain. Okay. I want, to, I want all of you to take a rest. I'll take watch. I'll let you know if anything happens, all right? Are you sure you want to take the whole rest by yourself, Captain? I, I can take the rest. I have I have an energy to march throughout the night. Instead, because of these beetles, we have to sit here and wait. So I'll watch. All right. Okay. All right. Good night. Thank you for leading us in the fight. Good night. <laughs> Ooh, that's so sweet. Um. He, oh man, no, I'm not gonna make him be mean. He's not mean. He's not gonna. He's not gonna be mean. I swear. Courage will probably cry. <laughs> oh no! Don't cry! No! Um, cry! He's been crying and... in Mel's guard. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet, at least. Um, so let's go ahead and move into. Let's go ahead and move into. Oh, does anybody have Weather Watcher? No. No. Okay. I have Legend of the Godwise, and I still don't know what that is. <coughs> yes. Oh, oh I'll tell. I'll, I'll let you know when you decide not to use Laborer to help someone. I'm sorry. Oh, you have Weather Watcher. Yep. Okay. What is your Weather Watcher? Three. Three. It is going to rain today, but you can roll your Weather Watcher against spring in order to make sure it is more favorable weather. So I will fight a season. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. You will literally fight spring. So in this right. case, I will use my trait. Unfortunately, know... spring has six. Oh, that's bad news. Spring has six dice. Um, somebody can help you with, I think it's scientist. And sure. I have scientists, so I can help you with that. What is the science thing of which you speak? <laughs> Combining stuff. Uh, does science. anybody have? Does anybody have a wise they want to help with as well? I have herb wise, which I don't think is really going to help here. Yeah, I don't think I don't think poison wise <laughs> is going to help either. <laughs> Po poison wise? I don't think you can. <laughs> That's what I have, yeah. Poison wise. <laughs> I mean, That's even I am having good. a stretch trying to make poison wise work. <laughs> um, um, so I want to I want to offer courage an optional. You can use Legends of the Guard Guard wise to help, but here's the thing: Legends of the Guard wise requires one very important key thing from you. You have to tell me the legend that helps Heathcliff to predict the weather. <laughs> okay. It has okay, to be about the mouse guard, and it has to be about the weather, and it better be inspired. <laughs> Otherwise, he doesn't get a, 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 that D6 of helping dice. Am I the only one who can Am I the only one who can help? Yes. Okay. Moira is helping with scientists, but he's pretty... Before I go to sleep. Okay, well, I'll... Can I only do this once, he said? Yes. Okay, well then, if, if he's already got one, I'll save it 
so we really need it. And oh no, you can you can help him, and you can help him. Oh, okay, cool. Well, he probably I needs it. How about I I'm just saying. The story? There was once this time when it was raining, and there was this magical mouse man from a guard mouse guard. He was a guard mouse, and he 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 he, he flurried his cloak and blew the rain away, and it was amazing. And I saw it all in in what happened in real life. <laughs> I was right there. It's a hundred percent true. I'm really being a hundred percent honest. It was true. It was like Inside tornadoes. Check. <laughs> it all went. Hell yeah. Um... Heathcliff, this, this, okay, this story reminds you that the wind will be key in deciding what weather will be approaching you. You get one helping dice. Okay, so I'm I and have, I'm uh, rolling three with Moira or M five. Okay, I need to be two. Spring, so Spring only got two successes. Okay, so I have my three dice. I have Moira's dice, that's four, and I have uh, Courage's dice, so I have five d6. And you wanted to use Weather Sense? Mm, yes, I would. All right. So that's gonna be Remember, five this allows you to dictate the weather. <laughs> so as I'm sitting there uh, with Moira, sit listening to this story, we're talking uh, with Moira. We're talking uh, his cloak cloud a shapes. Bit. We're talking cloud shapes and nimbleness and height and and uh, barometric pressure while we're hearing. You know, normally, story. normally it, it would probably be bad, but it, right now it looks like that one's probably going to pass quicker than we think it is. And blah blah. blah. Kind of and fine. they called him the Weather Man. <laughs> I just see unicorns. Yes, Ooh. four successes. <laughs> I just see unicorns. Wow. <laughs> and right when when uh, Kira says unicorns, you're like, that's right, it is just unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> what weather is in for you tomorrow, Heathcliff? Uh, <laughs> we're going south, so there's going to... It was going to rain. Yeah. It was going to rain. It's no longer raining because the wind is coming from the south now. So we're going... Ooh. We are downwind. Awesome. So we'll smell, we'll smell when it's coming if it comes. Oh, that's cool. That's so smart. Oh, I'm that's so proud really of you. Smart. That's way smart. That's really smart. Good job. All right. Success. The day afterwards brings with it a rather beautiful sunshine eater, as well as a s southern wind that blows to the north. And then you realize you have to march. I'm going to need that Pathfinder check, but guess what? It's going to be much, much easier now, thanks to that weather watcher. Obstacle three to make it proper wood. It was that me. Who wants to lead? Uh, That's anybody who wants to volunteer. I have Pathfinder 3. So do I, I so. Flip it. a coin? Oh, okay, cool. Well, you know what? I will let... I'm, I'm gonna see what the newbie can do. So we're gonna... <laughs> okay. We're gonna, like, you know, alright, let's see what let's see what you're gonna say before I, uh... Give you any tips I need to give you. So I'll help okay. you with tips. <laughs> okay. Is it... So it's dice slash... Uh, slash well. die. Okay. Don't roll yet right. because you need helping dice. Well, I expect. Okay. Yeah, I have Pathfinder, so I can help by whenever you're looking in the mm -hmm. wrong direction, I'll make one of the beetles chitter so that you look in where you're supposed to be looking. That's cute. <laughs> That's so cute. I love a squad. I love a cooperative squad. Okay, so, so is it five d six? Um, you're getting help from Heathcliff. You're getting help from Kira, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Moira, are you helping? Uh, I'm hungry Moira. and thirsty, so I don't, I don't know if I'd be much help. Cause oh no, you can, you can still help even though you're hungry and thirsty. Uh, I have, I have Pathfinder. If, if oh, that helps, yes, as well. Yeah. 
Good. Okay. So you have. Let's all. I think you're rolling the 66. 66. Let's go. Go. The question is: go. Is Samson helping? Is Samson doing something? What is Five. Samson doing? No. Six, six, he's 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 watching all of you. He's assessing. I did it. Yes, mouse watcher. <laughs> um, I don't see it. Mine. It says yeah, five successes? six two one six four. Yeah. I promise. It was five six two one, one six four. Oh, that's yours. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I, I got mixed up. So you totally do it. Yeah. Okay. This is the power of teamwork, everybody. Teamwork and makes the work is better world. when you're working with friends, right? You guys <laughs> make it in record time to Copperwood. Turns out, going uh, straight through the wilderness worked out for you. Now, Copperwood is one of the largest and oldest cities in the territories, probably because it is where most of the metal goods comes from. Uh, it is located under this mighty oak, and you also know that it has tunnels leading from the town itself to a very lovely waterfall pond. And I would also like to mention that you're welcomed in Copperwood with open arms, but they humbly request that you leave your weapons at the at the gate. Hmm. Sure. I go to the, closest the rest of you? person who's looking after the weapons and I say, This was my brother's needle. Please keep it very safe. So I hand them my needle, but I keep my helmet. <laughs> uh, so the whole, uh, the guard the whole there says, cart's going to go in. Hmm? The whole cart is going to go in, but they want you to leave your weapons. No weapons allowed in Copperwood. Even for the Guard. <laughs> the guard crosses her arms and says, That's right. We understand you have a duty to uphold, but we also want the guard to understand that your authority only reaches into the wilderness, not our townships. Hmm. Of course, we trust her to do your job, but we don't want any funny business. What's Samson doing? Samson crosses his arms, looks to each of you and says, You want to make a big deal out of this? You can. No, he I think it's fine. We'll be in and out. He does. He has a shield and he also has a big uh, burly uh, sword at his side that he unhooks from his belt and hands over. Okay, if the leader puts it uh, down then I follow my belief and my instinct, and I follow for all leadership. All right. Very well. And then you are led inside. Samson, once again, being quick, no delay, drops the honey pot off, and as swift as you had come, you begin to leave. And Courage, this is rather sad because you can hear the waterfall in the distance and you would love probably to get a look at this magnificent town of Copperwood. But Samson, again, looks to Heathcliff and says, we need the Beatles to go into overdrive if you can. I want to get at least two towns today. Dory Gift is not far. Um, I have a question. Not far, he says. Yes. I have a question because I believe that I'm going to do a thing. So, um, Moira, you you do look hungry and tired, right? Oh, definitely, yeah. And she's been yawning all day because she's oh. nocturnal, so she she like actually doesn't oh. enjoy this whole this whole walking during the day thing. It's really not oh, fun. Oh no! Oh no! And what time is it now? It's Lovely. probably going to be about. You know what? It's it's still it's gonna be like just noon. You just hit noon. Oh, decent. I, this, is, this is still the it's GM's decent. turn. This is still the GM's turn. You have two more towns to go. Okay. I am going to approach the beetle that he kicked and make the sounds, <laughs> the chittering sounds for the beetle to make uh, herd sounds. 
and oh like, no I'm, I'm I'm sorry sir we're gonna need a little time this one's leg just I need like an hour at most maybe two okay courage okay. sheds a single tear <laughs> do you have manipulator no because I'm a good mouse I'm a bad player I'm a good mouse I do have I? something. Dude. I have to I do, now here's the thing. This is now it it's okay if you don't have manipulator because you can still test it. You'll just have to use beginner's luck. So if you want to have this scene play out as you sort of are describing it, you can roll half of your will and you can start learning manipulator. Okay. Samson will just so roll will be, his will against you. So there'll be half my will rounded down, right? Uh, round it up. Mount is kind. Yeah, round it up. Okay, so, that's two. <laughs> so that's the same as my persuader. And guy, I'm going to. Oh, you know can, what? I'm going to use my help? I'm going to use defender. Woo. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, you can totally help if Thinking you want. Through. And defender, that's going to yeah, be really like, useful. Yeah, like, I, I see, uh. Uh. Looking at the the, the the uh critter's leg and I come over because I kinda feel what he's trying to do. I'm like, oh yeah, this this leg, I, I it probably could use a poultice for an hour or two and like start putting together one. I am already asleep Ooh. against one of the other beetles. <laughs> like back against one of the other beetles, just like sleeping. <laughs> I will also help by saying to Samson, you know, if we spent a little bit of time to work together as a team and form some great friendships, then we would be even more efficient. I'm using Persuader, because I have that in two, apparently. Alright. That's good. Wow. All of you... Hmm. Okay, so I think you get two helping dice, Heathcliff. Yeah. And I'll use Defender in there, because mm. I'm... I'm protecting Moira, and I'm seeing Courage that's just vibrating out of her fur to go see something. Uh, I'm a boy! Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I realize. <laughs> uh, so that will be my two of Beginner's Luck, plus one for Defender, plus two for Help, so that's five. Alright, I'm also rolling five dice. <gasps> Let's do this. Let's Here we do go. This, oh, this is tense. Uh, you got three. Mm. Uh, you... Okay, here we go. I'm going now. Oh! <laughs> oh yeah! I don't know what that means. Tied. Yes. Oh wait, sorry, that's we're three. We're tied. <laughs> yeah, we're tied. Okay, here's. I have options for you. Tiebreakers are okay. Here's what I have for you. You can do one of three things. There are points in this game that I am int introducing to you right now. They are called Persona Points and Fate Points. Now, Persona Points can be used to add one to your roll, or you can use them to tap your Ys. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you can only do that if your Ys can relate to your roll. So yep. when you tap your Persona, it allows you, uh, or rather you tap your Ys with a Persona, it allows you to re-roll all of your failures. You could also tap your Nature. <sighs> and with, with when you tap your Nature, you add your entire Nature to your roll with your Persona point. So those that's, that's one way you can use a Persona point. Each of you has one Persona point, by the way. What I'm going to recommend to you is using a Fate point. Each of you has two fate points to start out with. You can use a fate point to re-roll any sixes that you have in your roll, and then it stacks if you get another success. You could also use a fate point to re-roll a failure that is correlating with your Ys. So what I advise you to do is to spend a fate point and explode that six. It would Hell just be re-rolling yeah. one. If you succeed, yeah. you succeed. If you fail, we have one more option. 
Yeah, because I do. Yeah, that's I can, up to I you. Can, you want to spend a fate point? Yeah, I can use one of my two fate points to re-roll the six to stack, and then my backup would Woo. be use a persona point for uh, using the wise. I actually have another option for you. You mm -hmm. could break the tie in his favor, and mm -hmm. I can give you two checks for the player's turn. Not today, mm. Satan. I think that I'm going to. <laughs> mm, I think I'm going to uh, stick with my squad and help the people that need helping yeah. today. Very well. Uh, so let's use one of the fate points, which I have one of two now, and re-roll that six. Pop it. And Market drop polka it. Polka and... it. <laughs> You succeed. Now, in it, now that six keeps exploding, by the way. So, do you want to roll more? Yeah. I mean. Oh. Okay. What, does, okay. what does that mean? What does exploding six mean? That means it keeps going. Oh, keep, yeah. It keeps yeah. popping in. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, you have broken the tie, and wouldn't you know it, Samson only breaks his hard resolve a little bit when he sees Moira passed out on the beetle. <laughs> and he uh, crosses his arms and says, All right. It's an hour or two, sir, nothing more. Everyone in... You know, it, it's, it's fine. It's just, we have, we have a mission to attend to, and I'd rather do more than just deliver honey this spring, all right? We'll take we'll take yes, an sir. hour or two. Get some food. And do some trust exercises. This Yeah. This is going to open an opportunity. Do any of you have uh, your friend listed? Do not. Nope. Uh, do, yes. Did any of you I, I don't think I told you guys to make friends and enemies. My, Oops. my, my no, friend's name is my friend's name is Autumn. Uh, and Autumn? I have no other details. No other details about her. Do you want uh, Autumn to also be in the guard? Uh, she certainly could be. Um, the friends that made me section of the book was like, just name them. So I, <laughs> that's what I did. Exactly. So here's what I think. I think this is an opportunity for um, you are you are uh, awakened by a familiar uh, <laughs> sing song voice. And all of you see uh, uh, three mouse guard running over, uh, led by. Describe Autumn for us, Moira. Uh, Autumn is a, a gray furred mouse with a with a navy blue cloak. Uh, she has like a little sword at her hip, though. I guess here she probably doesn't because the weapons are not a thing. Um, uh, she's slightly taller than average. She's like a tall mouse. Um, and other than that, that's that, that's pretty much it. All right, she comes running over, and immediately each of you are drawn to this uh, this guard mouse. Uh, is she a guard mouse, or is she uh, maybe a little higher on the totem pole? She's probably a patrol guard. She's a little older. Patrol guard, I like that. Um, and you hear this, oh, Moira, oh my, hey. Oh, wake up! Wake up, what? Moira! Oh, yeah, uh, oh, uh, hi! She, she like, it's, gets up and sort of dusts me. herself off. Oh my goodness, you are on a beetle! What are you doing? Here? It's and she been a long... It's, 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 it's been a long trip, and she, like, gets hugged in a, like, awkward sort of, like, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing kind of situation. <laughs> like, um, when a tall, the tall mouse is just like, yeah. And, and uh, uh, she goes, oh, wow. Oh, 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 sorry. Um, this is, um, oh, this is my patrol. We're on a mission. Uh, oh, I'm so glad I caught you. Hey, hey. Okay, and she turns to, uh, there's a brown fur and a, a dark fur, and uh, she says, this is Carrick, and this is Emily. Say hi, <gasps> this is, this is my friend from Spruce Tuck. And they both give a bow. Both of them seem very patient. Hi. 
And uh, like, you see uh, uh, the one in <laughs> the uh, yellow cloaked mouse, Emily, uh, who is the brown fur, uh, steps up to uh, Moira and says, we've heard a lot about you. It's good to meet you. We haven't learned a lot about you. We just saw you and she ran over here. <laughs> it's uh, nice to meet you too. Um, is there something that I can help with, uh, Autumn? Oh no, I just saw cloaks, and I, I had I <laughs> I had to do something. I had to just you know, it's mouse guard. You know, we as guard offer all. Uh, y- yes, oh, wait, of course. Oh, By the way. Yes, you are here yeah, while this is like happening. This, this is great. And uh, you see Samson uh, sort of stiffen everybody, and Emily turns to him and says, "Samson, it's it's good to see you. I'm glad that you're that you're uh, out of Lockhaven, out on a mission. I see." He goes, "Yes, I am." With your new patrol, very nice. They look very capable. You still got. Oh, I'm you're on honey capable. delivery. That's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's good to hear. Who's mouth. this? My name's Karen. And, uh. Okay, Moira, Autumn, like, melts. And she leans in and she goes, His name's Courage? <laughs> I just met him. I don't know him very well. Um, you should, you talk, Mara, that's so Mara. sweet. You gotta take care of. No, take care Hello? of him. What are you gonna teach him? Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi. He's so cute. Oh. What are you good at? Um. Well. <laughs> finding paths and telling stories and making friends. Telling I think we're stories. Oh my goodness, we were just about to go to Haver, would you like to come with us? Uh, I don't think I'm old enough, but maybe in like two years. <laughs> oh, humbug, we can get you orange juice, sweetheart. <laughs> okay! That sounds like a okay, great idea. Okay, Moira, do you want okay. anything? Moira, you have to try. They have this cream puff. It's not like gab cream, but it's more like a little fluffy. And she begins to drag you away. <laughs> Both of you. Yeah, and Mora, Mora's like, she's not very resistant to this sort of thing. Like, a strong personality just overrides her entirely, and just keep, she just gets, like, mm-hmm. sort of dragged off. Yeah, Samson, uh, Samson, 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 next to the, uh, to the, to the, to the, the, the beetle's leg, and j- is just quietly losing it, because she's laughing so hard. <laughs> but she, you know, you, you see her shoulders shaking, but she's just, like, keeping her face <laughs> away. <laughs> I I just whispered to Kiara, there are there are two courages. Oh my god! <laughs> no. Perfect. Samson, um, Samson, Samson, now, Samson, are you coming too? Are you coming too? I will Yay! be there. Yay! Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, Emily stays. Emily stays behind. Carrick. He seems to be a little quieter than everybody else. He runs after you guys. Kira and Heathcliff, <laughs> you notice that Samson and Emily begin talking to one another very privately. And um, you do hear her say, uh, well, listen, if, 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 if it's not too much, we could, we could, uh, we're leaving soon. If you like, uh, if you're on honey duty, we can, we can, where are you going? And he goes, Dora goes to Napa Loft. Oh well, we can totally get Dory gift for you if it's if it's not a problem. We can order a cart and take one of them to that direction. They're in opposite directions. I wouldn't want you to stay out as long as you like. And he sort of says, "You know, what are you trying to do here?" Yeah, Especially Kira kind of like draws herself up a little offended by this. Like, what you think we're incompetent? <laughs> mm, oh, do you say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Emily sort of straightens up and says, "Well, no, it's um, it's just I'm trying to be." It's honey duty. It's 
It's nothing. We'll, we'll take one of your honey pots to Dory Gift. You make way to Apple Loft. It's fine. All right, it's fine. Sent. You notice he is frowning and not. He doesn't have this. He's not. He's not saying no. And you imagine there's something in terms of rank here between these two patrol leaders that is getting in the way. I and wanted to think, pieces, but I've done a lot of things. So oh, I don't know if I should. You've done a lot of things. I have. I don't know. It depends because. <laughs> It's true, and you do have your instinct and belief. Samson says, we're fine, take it. We need your help. We're fine, it makes you feel better. He uh, sort of pushes past her and goes to the tavern. Moira, guess what? You are no longer hungry and thirsty. <laughs> because Autumn loads Hooray. your plate up with drink and berries. Mm. berries. And she... Yay. she eats them with, with great enthusiasm. Oh, scrumptious! Oh, mm. Um, she, by the way, Autumn is eating, like, uh, raspberries. And, <laughs> Courage, she, uh, she looks to you and says, Okay, have you ever seen, uh, a possum before? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, I, well, they, if you ever meet one, and it freezes, okay. and it looks at you like this. Okay, <laughs> okay. And she starts, like, just drooling with all this red, like, juice down her chin, and she's like, if it drools like this, nah, that's bad, you stay away. You stay away, Okay, gosh. okay. I very... <laughs> but be brave, and, like, be brave, okay? Oh. Be brave. Okay. Be brave, I'm, 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 be brave. I'm, I'm, okay? I'm very, very jumpy in, in intense situations. Um, but I'm thinking my enthusiasm will override that, I'm sure. So it's okay. I'll, I'll do exactly can-do attitude until they start drooling from the mouth. She, um, I'm she's, sort of she's storing my berries in my cheeks. I think that's something that's that hamsters do, but I had a hamster friend, I guess. I allow it. I allow it. Cool. Is there anything else you guys want to do before gonna... uh, you apparently depart for Appaloft? I don't know. I've, I've successfully not been hungry and tired anymore, so that's good. Yeah, your friends I'm going... can uh, do things for you, like uh, remove hungry and thirsty and stuff like that. Ooh. I am going to and I'm having a nice meal and a drink with Moira and friends. Mm. All right. And after maybe two hours, um, Samson gathers all of you and says, "Are we ready to go?" Yes, sir. I am. Woo! Excellent. My hip. Oh wait. Is very I lonely. Swear we had one more. I want my sword back. I <laughs> <laughs> What happened to the other and honey pot? Emily's patrol is taking it. They're going to door gift for us. That's so kind of them. See, people are so friendly. Well, let's work for us, I guess. Yeah, a friendly. Yeah, no, I'm like just kind of giving you this, like, what? No luck. Yeah. Yeah, he is, uh, he is well salted right now. <laughs> As we're walking, Emily I'm gonna was grab a little. Able to handle it by mm -hmm. You would definitely be able to handle it, Kira. You're amazing. So cool. As we're walking, I'm gonna okay. grab old to Moira and say. Uh, honey, honey's nothing. Honey's important. You know all the health benefits that it has, royal jelly, all the things that it can do. How dare she? My parents have had a bee farm for decades. That's so good. Hmm. Hmm. Bee farm. Whoa. He's offended. I am. I am offended. I am also a mouse. 
man. <laughs> right, I think we are ready to march to Appaloft. Onwards. The Beatles. Onwards. Oh. Onwards. Beatles are good. And I would now like someone to make a hunter check. Ooh, hunter. I do not have Because that. remember, the wind is blowing, and all of you catch a scent that is quite potent. Does anybody have I hunter? Do, I do not have hunter. Nope. Otherwise, Samson might have to roll. Ooh. Ooh. That's gonna be fun. Yeah. Middle management. Samson. I mean, I can help him with survivalist, because, you know, it's kind of like hunting. <laughs> I will allow that, yes. Yeah, in that case, right. we're it's almost going to be a high obstacle. Let's help Samson. Gotcha. He will heal his heart. All right. With the power of freedom. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Samson is going to be 66 for his hunter check. Bam! Wow. Damn. Damn. Four sixes. Holy shit. All right. He smashes it. Here's what happens. Your march towards Appaloft is not difficult because you're traveling along a road. But every now and then, Samson pauses. His step simply slows. And he sort of lifts his nose to the air, his whiskers twitch, and you see his tail begin to beat the ground erratically as he starts walking again, glancing around, very concerned. Is everything okay? Is this when we walk without rhythm? He he doesn't answer. Aww. He says, keep marching. Aww. Yes, sir. Okay. He looks to uh, Kira and he says, do you smell that? And you do. You smell something. It's, it's, it's an odd odor. It's a thick musk that you're not quite familiar with. It's not, it's not weasel. But it's predatory in nature, but you it's overwhelming. It smells something. It's not good. The, there shouldn't be anything this far out here that smells like that. And he I continues can. walking. And he draws his sword. He steps forward into a clearing and you see quite honestly a beautiful uh little uh apple tree and then further along you see several more uh each of them with their own uh ripe plump apples here and there and then you see one of them has fallen it has been ripped from its side, torn all the way to the ground, and its broken trunk is snapped, its thin trunk snapped, it's a little sapling, almost like a, a forgotten spear pointing towards the spring sky, warm summer day, spreading this heavy smell, entrenching it in your nostrils as each of you begin to feel your mouse in nature begin to prickle with panic. I should run, I should escape, <clears throat> but from what? And that is when you see another fallen <laughs> apple tree. This one, it's not completely fallen, more like its branches have been clawed off, sheared with some powerful force, and you see wreckage. You see, Appaloft. No. 
The trees of Apple Loft are connected, built into the branches of these fantastic and plentiful, beautiful apple trees, connected by various bridges and ropes so that this town flourishes high above the ground. You see these bridges, these houses that are built, the very apiary smashed onto the wildland. And you hear screaming. <laughs> oh, so like this is still an active ah! destroying feed. <laughs> yes. Yes. Gotcha. Courage it is, the is player's like turn. shaking. But he runs forward anyway. To go and help people. Alright. Courage like, charges yeah, forward. Like crying as he does. Ah! Uh Kira. <laughs> like skitters up a tree and draws her bow looking for what's causing the uh, destruction. Okay. Okay, sweet. You go ahead and make a nature check for, actually, wait. Yeah, no, make a nature check for climbing. This will be obstacle, obstacle three. What's your nature? Uh, five. <coughs> five? Okay. Yep. You know what? Actually, obstacle two, because Appaloft probably has uh, handholds for mice to get up and down easily. Uh, yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, you scramble <laughs> up, and you see uh, further carnage. Uh, it is as though a typhoon has come through and torn through apple loft, ripping the branches from the trees and tossing its residents into heaps in the wreckage. And you see there are several mice running to and fro between the wreckage, trying to get sense of what has happened and trying to recover from this devastation. I go and I help. I help whoever I can because I do my best to protect those who cannot protect themselves. Well, yeah, immediately, like immediately, Courage, you... Oh. I'm gonna say, uh, immediately, yeah. Courage, you see that there, there is a... There is a crashed house that you hear uh, some wailing coming out of, and you see uh, underneath it is a, a little mouse trying to peer through. He's tightly compacted in this wreckage underneath all this. Uh, wood and uh, what? Is, oh my God! What is wrong with you, Cat? Do you hear this? Good day. Yeah. We're, this, yeah. Good, hello. <laughs> it, it is. It is a horrifying scene, and there is a beautiful kitty. Um, there is a, a cat mouse is the big sort of trying to squeeze through. <laughs> yeah. Um, he is uh, peering through this uh, blonde furred mouse, saying, I, I, "I'm stuck. I, I, I can't get out." I'm coming! I'm coming! I run over, and I start to help, and I say to okay. him, I can't do much, but I can do this! <laughs> alright, alright. Start helping pull him out. Give me a laborer check. A laborer? Oh, yeah! Two laborer, <laughs> so... Samson runs over and begins helping you. Three. Four. His great brutish form sort of digging and pulling, lifting uh, wreckage from this okay. uh, house, Hang on. this dwelling. I can't, it's, sorry, it's not, um, it's not rolling. Hmm? Can you Did remind you me do how your, to do uh, like... slash die? Slash oh yeah, uh, do a slash die and how many dice you're rolling. You're rolling three, three dice, but do you have any traits that you can use to help? Uh, Guards, Honor, Determined, and Fearful. I have one of each of those. <sighs> oh, you can only use one per uh, roll. Determined sounds great, so you'll be Determined. using that, and you'll have four dice, I think, right? Four dice, okay. Okay, did it work? Okay, this is gonna be obstacle two. Hang on, sorry, I keep putting it in, but it just doesn't... It's not coming up. For How about this? Do you see? Do you see the D six, uh, the the dice yeah. at the bottom of your screen? And yeah, I can just roll that. Right, right click the D six. 
Yeah, right click the D6. Oh no, I just and rolled it it'll bring up me. like uh it didn't yeah. show up. Okay, cool. Here, how about I just Hang type on. it in for you? Will that work? Yes. That's fine. Right. You do that. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> Three. Okay. okay, yeah, that that just just barely makes it. <sighs> you oh, are able to sort of reach in. You grab his uh his hands, and you see Samson sort of crouch in behind you and his entire bulk sort of heaves against uh, the beam that is about to basically crush the two of you. And he says, pull, pull him! I pull him! And you pull him, and with one quick, you pull out this mouse and he immediately begins to let out a yelp of pain. And you oh. see he has uh, his, his left leg, uh, to your horror, it is twisted, uh, very badly in one direction where it should not be. Flashback to my brother's injury, and I'm like, not again! And I'll pick him up <laughs> and run him over to Moira. Oh gosh, <laughs> like, I okay. Know, I don't know how, I don't I, know I mean, how the I was game works. I was, gonna say, um, I was gonna say on my player turn, I'm gonna look for people who are wounded or, or injured or what have you. So that kind of works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, I'm actually thinking this might be the player's turn. Okay. All right. I thought it was so, the player's turn. Um, I thought you told us it was the player's it was, turn. It was, yeah. it was, it was. Yeah, I tried yeah. to announce it was the player. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, Kira, your nature check with climbing, I will give you more information about what is happening and what has happened. Okay. Um, you see that there has been some sort of rampage. And amidst the clues that you find, beyond that uh, very powerful stench, um, you see that there are core apple cores, um, crunched bits, slobber, matted fur here and there. And you see that all of the trees that were affected have deep grooves from some sort of claw that has dug into them uh, as it crushed them and pulled them down to whatever maw that awaited them. You also see, at first, you are like wondering what these pits are in various places in Apoloff's grounds. And you notice that those are not merely like dug pits. Those are giant footfalls from something. And you also see and this is probably horrifying to a degree. You see one of the most disgusting leftovers of any predator you've ever seen, a titanic pile of shit. Yeah. Lying um, nearby. Great. But I don't see any evidence that the critter it's, is still here. You, you don't see any evidence that the critter is still here. Um, so we got scat wise to figure out what kind of critter is. Wise. Scat wise is a good wise to rely on. I will admit. <laughs> scat wise. Scat wise. Uh, Bear scat. Great. Because this guess what? I don't. I honestly could not. Like you, this is not weasel. This is not snake. This is very clearly the evidence of a bear attack. And you begin ah. to hear the the rambled wails of the mice who have been able to get themselves free, yelling about a titanic beast. Um, several of them approach Samson, saying, "You have to go to this house here. There's a it's a it's a monster. It's some sort of it's it's a beast. What's it doing here? Sigmar was supposed to keep monsters like that out." And everyone is uh, weeping, screaming, yelling for help as more mice are still trapped underneath the debris here and there. I'm going to assume Courage is busy with helping out in that respect. Yep. I believe that uh, Heathcliff and Moira, you have players' turn checks to spend. Yeah, I'm going to do a healer check on the various people that I can see who are injured, scampering from one place to another with my bandages and splints and such. Very nice. 
So your healer check. That is going to be obstacle... Ooh. Obstacle four, I'm afraid. Oh. Okay, well, I, Can I might have my... to rely on traits. Uh, I don't have a trait that I think will help here. I have Inquisitive, Foolish, and Nocturnal. And none of them are particularly helpful. Can I use my... Does anybody... Uh, you can help freely. Uh, it doesn't cost a turn okay. to help. Uh, oh, that's so sweet from the mouse guard. You don't need to use spend anything to help, because <laughs> help is good. Uh, I, the more we play this, the more I like yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I would like to um, use, if I can, apiaries to help by collecting uh, leftover honey from the broken apiaries for poultices and Oh uh, my god. That's like a natural disinfectant. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. Well, I That is so really smart. Fine. And I, I will Dad, yeah, does out anybody else? Well. Yep. Cut up. Uh with what? Uh healer. Uh so I'm uh -huh. helping like, you know, set healer? phones or whatever, yeah, assistance. Uh Now I have to ask. Courage. Do you have a legend of the guardwise to help? <laughs> hmm. I was just I was just thinking of that. Um I'll talk about as I'm rushing in between houses, I'll shout out the story of how once <laughs> there was a real amazing mouse who could appear in times of great need named the Doctor, who was <laughs> so helpful and came when you were least expecting them and they always succeeded and you're gonna succeed too just like they did and that i love uh, you even though we're not really friends yet it's it's can doctor appeared in mouse guard <gasps> oh my god then. you're getting three helping dice elf go ahead and roll whenever you are ready obstacle oh, four oh. i'll be right back Five successes. Yeah, it looks like well five done. Easy. Five successes. The, the power of friendship. All right. <laughs> well so played. I'm, I'm healing. You're I'm healing up to... our various injured, injured um, compatriots who are trapped under things or or sustained any injuries from this this disaster. Um, you know, ner nervously, sort of just making sure that everybody's okay as much as possible. Yeah, I imagine you set up this like triage almost of uh... pretty much like yeah, it's this little like area of clear space where people are bringing wounded mites to me, and I'm dealing with it there with Kira, um, who's who's helping with the healing, and of course like Heathcliff is running back and forth for various lead discarded honey. I imagine. Yep. Yeah, that honey is coming in handy because honestly, most of the injuries are from the fall. And from being uh, crushed underneath some things, but you act with purpose, and your impact is immediately noticeable. Um, I guess that leaves us with Heathcliff. Oh, right! I used used free help. Uh, I would like to follow up on what uh, Kiara is doing and look at the damage that was done by the bear specifically to the apiaries to take wax moldings of the size of the paw prints to determine what type of threat we're dealing <gasps> with and with that try to determine the direction from where I believe the, the scent barrier was uh, broken oh I see so what skill are going to be rolling for this? It sounds uh, like scientists. All of them? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know, right? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, because I can use my finder want... to reverse engineer the path that the bear took. I could use scout. I could use survivalist. I could use apiaries to use the wax and the damage Dude. of the apiaries progressing. I could use uh, guard mouse wise. I um, I want you to roll scout to discover okay, which direction the bear scouts. is going. I have two scouts, yeah, and I will roll. burn my 
my guard mouse wise on this uh, because of the training that I received and my mentor and all of the guard mouse good things. And I'll right help because you know I saw you know a little bit from when I was up the tree, and I could tell you totally where you that got the helicopter exactly. perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I have two uh, two on scout, one because of guard mice wise, and one because of uh, Kiara. Okay, sounds good. Die this is a versus six. test, by the way. Versus bear. Mouse versus bear. This is black bear. I succeed once. Oh. Oh. All right. The bear makes his roll, or hers. Oh my God! So many, so many bears. Oh my! We're weak. Oh no! <laughs> no bear. Right. We're bullies. <laughs> so you remember when? Uh, you remember when Moira failed, and I gave uh, Moira a condition. There's something else that I can do when you fail. I can invoke a twist. A twist is a new fold of the story. It is a wrinkle that makes things worse. Am I aware, Bear? And as you begin... <laughs> and, and as you begin this... this very detailed excavation of which direction it may be going, you realize quite horrifyingly so, that it has already made its march towards the north. Deeper oh, into the territories. But you do know that it came somewhere from the west. From the direction of the scent border. Okay, so it made its way. And Can I ask uh, follow up information questions? Yes. Uh, so if we went north and we came from Ivydale, it must have deviated at some point because we uh, cop counter. Yeah, you yeah. definitely know that it's not moving uh, towards Copperwood because that's where you came from. So you must assume that it's moving northeast. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, so I'll, that's as Unfortunately, much as that means it's going towards... Black yeah, you know there's Rose, two towns Wallow, that it should be heading towards. Storestone, Root Wallow okay. and Shorestone. Okay. So with that information and Kara's help, and I can see what Moira and Courage are doing with, uh, with Samson, I'm going to have to approach Kiara and say, Kiara... Uh, you can read the tracks. This this is going east. What are we going to do? Bears. Bears no easy task. We're only five of us. And we're small. It's a bear. And we are very small. <sighs> um <sighs> Well we we do what we can for the people here, and I, I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to try to at least push it and maybe get past them. I mean, maybe we can move faster than they are, especially if we leave the uh, the uh, beetles behind. We can maybe get there ahead of the bear and warn them. What size are the beetles compared to mouse size? The beetles are like they're, they're kind of mouse ATV size. ATV size? But like you're, I'm gonna say you're a little bigger, yeah. Bordeaux sized. Hmm. Uh, well, I said I said Bordeaux. I meant Mastiff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mastiff size. I my parents bred French Mastiffs, and French Mastiffs are Dog uh, de Bordeaux. <laughs> uh, my bad. Kiara, we might actually be able to ride the Beatles. I don't know if we. Mm. We should bring this to Samson. You see Samson continuing to heft lumber and sort of like ripping it out from a, a pile, making sure that he can get to uh, the whaling uh, residence inside, and he's able to. He uh, 
freely grabs uh, uh, basically the entire family and just rips mm. them out one by one. Yeah. In Courage in swift never motions. leaves his side. He's right next to Samson the whole time, like, yeah. Squad. Oh man, that's great. He, 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 he smiles down at you, Courage, and he's like, good, good job. <gasps> Finally living up to your name, I see. Hell yeah. Uh, ca Captain, and, uh, we, uh... he turns uh, to, uh... We've, uh, we've got a little problem? A little, a little problem. <laughs> well, the bear yeah. seems to be going to, uh... To... Uh, towards rats, or root swallow. Root swallow and shore stone. Root wallow. Root wallow. It's really tend to him. He's a, um, he, uh, he breathes heavily, saying, All right. Well, in that case, we've got to. Well, we can't rout it. It's a bear. Yeah. No, but we can maybe warn them, and they can at least get out of the way. Then we need to do that. We need to warn Lockhaven, though. We can't have a bear running around like this. Listen. I'll make the march to Lockhaven and warn the Matriarch. Four of you go to Rootswallow. Alright? Yeah. I'm faster I, I, Captain? without <laughs> the rest of you. Yeah. Are you sure? Okay. No, I'm not sure. This is unprecedented. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to question your authority. <laughs> well, Captain, There's... I have to say, you run faster than we do, so it's probably better if you go that way. But I gotta. It's yeah. yeah. Mm. How to put this? Uh, keep your chin up, and whatever it is, don't trip over your own feet. Interesting. S Sam it's a Samson. Really bad joke. <laughs> Samson. I thought it was real funny. <laughs> Samson, Samson, wait, before you go. I take a little bit of yarn, because I have weave. I've got weaver, so I must have yarn somewhere, and I tie it around his wrist, and I say, "We're friends, right?" <laughs> he totally just made him a friendship bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're friends. Go do your job, please. Okay, but that this is an order. <laughs> that means we have an of friendship between us, which will keep you strong and safe. He looks some more up. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do that. I am now going to put Samson as my friend. <laughs> if that's okay. And you are his enemy, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! Well, just because it's one way that way doesn't mean it's not the other way the other way. <laughs> I could put him as my enemy and my friend. And unless you guys, unless you guys have any objections, he intends to rush towards Lockhaven and raise the alarm. Yeah, I would say. Well, while the rest of you, west, he was coming from the west from here. Like a good idea. From when the search starts. The send border was broken from the west. Yep, I, 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 it, it came from the west. There's no way a bear would make it from the east without anybody raising an alarm. Yeah, I'll give him a, a wax sample of the footprint so that he knows that it's this big. Yep, that's bigger. Very than well, <laughs> that is kind of bigger than us. <laughs> this is a small bear, if that was the case. A baby bear. <laughs> the baby bear was just hungry. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> um, and with that, um, he rushes off, wasting no time. 
while the rest of you begin your march towards Root Swallow. And that is where we will end this session. But okay. we're not oh. done yet. <gasps> we are not done yet because we have rewards to give you. That's right. Every okay. session of Mouse Guard, we end by granting each player rewards <gasps> based on their actions. So oh. I want you to uh, basically keep count of how many persona points and fate points you're going to get because these will be important considering the bear is present. Hmm. And you will need these in order to circumvent it. So who here acted on their belief? Who here basically your character's actions reflected that core belief that guides them? There really I think I did. No conflict. There was really no conflict for me to like conflict against my belief, so no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how about the rest of you? Yayo? Uh, I definitely think we. I, I took the, hey, we gotta go and face it, then let it get sneak up on us. Mm. Too true. Yeah, I think I said at one point, quite literally, I do my best to protect those who cannot protect themselves. So. <laughs> Feels good. I mean, you're the first one to rush in there, too. Ah! <gasps> That's what I do. And, and my yeah. belief. So did uh, I actually I actually went against my belief because I actually interjected myself <gasps> into a bunch of stuff. Yo, I I'm going to get to that in just a moment. No, it's fine. Wait, what, I love it. <laughs> what was your What was your belief again? Belief I believe others' opinions are higher than my own. And I manipulated the Ooh. Beatles, I talked up to people, um, I I did a bunch of stuff that is not that. Hell yeah. We love mm. playing against type. <laughs> so you don't get a fate point, but we'll return to that in a moment. Yeah. If anybody here played on their instinct, you gain a fate point. So if you ever uh, looked at your instinct and were like, I'm going to do that, you get a fate point. So. How many do we have to get one? Three. Um, only one for each of these. Okay. It tried so we start off with okay. zero. <laughs> so for fake points, we start off with zero, and then I get we get one. Okay. You you start off with two fake points, and then you okay. earn these if you uh, accomplish them. Okay. So I Speaking think of... I went. Ooh. I went with my instinct a couple times following the code and, and helping uh, Moira and Courage. Uh, like, I, I, I went against my belief, but I went with my instinct to make sure mm. that the patrol was strong. That's pretty sweet, the way you uh, played into each of those. Squad. Hashtag and uh, are we ready to move on to goals? Sure. Um, so really quickly, belief. So we get one fate point for acting on our beliefs and one for acting on our instinct. Is that it? Okay. Yep. That's very true. Now, if you accomplished your goal, if you met your goal in full, you get a persona point. If you were not able to accomplish your goal, but you were able to work towards it, you get a fate point instead. So if y'all want to read your goals, just to go over it and see if we were able to accomplish those. Did so I get Samson was... to laugh? <laughs> I do remember one you... time he chuckled. Yeah, he did. But it might yeah. have been DM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes. He found you refreshing. You were a refreshing presence. My uh, my goal was to not make a fool of myself with the people of note in the villages, uh, and I basically had no interaction with any of them, so I guess that counts. You mm. helped a lot with no, the healing. It, you for no, you did a help a lot. You forget you forgot your player's turn. You forgot your player. Oh yeah, I mean, I did the healing, sure, but I I meant like the honey pillar. Anyway, anyway. What do you, you slept on going? a beetle? <laughs> I slept on a beetle. It's true. That's true. 
It was more narratively. I think you accomplished your goal considering the player's turn. Um, okay. So I would give you a persona point for that. Uh, what about courage? I wrote make friends exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah, you made one yeah. friend. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Wait, more, he made good more old than Otto. He made the, uh, the, the two uh, other guard mice that Moira knew. That's true. Very true. Samson, Autumn, and well done. my squad. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Yay. Mr. Moss. I did make my voice heard at least a couple times. Mm -hmm. I oh, many times. Many times. Too many so. times. So you get a persona point no. as well. Yay. Just the right amount of time. So this is a difficult one. It is you get a persona point if you play against your belief. When your belief turns into something that is counter to your character and you do it in a cool and dramatic fashion. Did anybody do that? Because I know Heathcliff's belief sort of so. teetered and tottered. I don't know yeah. if it was... It was cool. I don't know if it was dramatic. <laughs> no, it wasn't mm. dramatic. And that's really the hard part of this, is I think everybody needs to, like, agree that something concerning a belief playing against was really cool and dramatic. And especially for first session, I, I don't think we'll get this one just yet, but it's it's open for the future. I mm -hmm. also want to uh, remind everyone, before we go into the last three rewards, that we can change our beliefs and instincts between sessions. So you have a, a, tol a whole week to uh, refine these in the meantime, if you feel like you need to. But I would like us to vote. We have to discover who the most valuable player is. And this is a mix of finding out which player played the most critical role in the group, uh, or the person who made the, uh, the very important role that uh, made success uh, sprout from darkness. What about you guys? What do you think? Uh, who deserves most valuable player? Uh, I'm uh, torn I between I Moira, Heathcliff, and Kira. <laughs> I, vote, I vote for Heathcliff because <laughs> without Heathcliff, the Beatles would never have gone anywhere, and that would have been really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. Too true. Mm, yeah, I, can go with that. I can think of really good arguments for all of you guys. Is the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Let's go. Let's do it. It's two already. Let's go for Heathcliff because also you kept Heathcliff, coming with like really you... cool ideas. Oh yes, yes. You found ways to like delay when uh, Moira needed uh, to get rid of yeah. hungry and thirsty. It was pretty fun. So I think you get a persona point because everybody is uh, agreeing that you deserve it. We go to uh, the second award. This is called the Workhorse Award, and it is granted to the player who gets the group through a lot of tough stuff. I like to imagine this is like workhorse. It means the player that like helps the most, I feel like, and is, um, how to describe? Like, you, like I don't want to like limit it to just like helping dice, but it is like the person who carries most of the burdens for the group and gets them through the tough times. I feel like Kira would be. I when it when I thought of helping, there was always like I felt you always had something you could do. And also, I was going to say courage. I feel like that too. Yeah. Or, courage or also had like. a lot of skills to help them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and more than more than skills, the upbeat personality of courage. I imagine <laughs> that during the treks must have been really helpful. I'm actually going to hold off on uh, the, there's going to be a role play award. Um, no. So, I, I think this is more mechanical than uh, the characters. Cool. I, I mean, I want to stick with Kira because I always I'm, felt like I heard. I'm still. You mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, Elf, what or do you think? Moira. No, I think Kira as well, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Alright, well, let's oh. go with uh, Kira. You get a persona point. And finally, we come to the Embodiment Award. 
This is for one player who best embodies their character during play. Um, they just acted in a compelling manner. They played off of their traits. They probably stuck out uh, and did something cool and 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 either dramatic. It's very like loose with embodiment. Oh, no, it's cool. sort of like every everybody <laughs> has a like a fan moment. So this is our chance to just like have a fan moment for each other. What do you guys think? Mm. Can we choose the DM? <laughs> Sorry, can we <laughs> DM? MM. I mean, yeah, Sansa would have to go with Courage. Consistent. Courage totally played closest to his, like, cheerful, enthusiastic, yeah. uh, yeah, tender paw self. Well. The oh, tenderest tender paw. <laughs> No, I wasn't even role playing with Autumn. That was just like my inner feelings. I just, I just bled joy whenever I saw courage. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you guys Beautiful. are all amazing role players as well. <coughs> I'm having so much fun with this whole squad. Courage gets a oh, persona point. Do that one. I'm, I'm for that. Yay! Courage. Thank you. Thanks, fam. All right, and uh, oh, that is done. the last reward. Voila. Um, and that leaves us to uh, just outros and what did you guys think of the game? This was some of your uh, first forays into Mouse Guard. What did you think? I liked it. Um, oh, I've it's read good. Burning yeah. Wheel, but I've never played Burning Wheel, so it's kind of an interesting <laughs> uh, intro to the system. Yeah, Mouse Guard is definitely it's very, like it's the, very like Burning Wheel light. Intro, yeah, to, to Burning Wheel esque things. Yeah, I saw you, Elf, and Adam, and everybody <laughs> run the character creation of Burning Wheel. Oh, you, you watched that? Saw okay. it. I saw it, I liked it, and it was so much that I couldn't deal with it. It's I was very complicated. So many things. <laughs> what I would say, I what, it I would say about, what I would say about that is, like, if I could do it again, I would, because it was the only time I did it, so now I would make a better one, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But I was watching oh, you yeah. Yeah. do all of that, and how hours and hours it took you and I thought oh this is so cool for someone else to do because I can't <laughs> and and then, Mouse, guard, Mouse Guard is good you're like living the, vicariously last version Mouse Guard that, yeah. just enough enough to give you that but not too much to overwhelm because uh, for me this is uh, the only system that I have played that isn't D&D &D. so, oh, nice. yeah, so it's a really different uh, change from the system of you and your skills versus you and your skills and how you can bring them to work together for everybody. Mm -hmm. It was really uplifting mm -hmm. and nice to be able to help everybody and everybody helps you. And... Yeah, I like that because especially in like when you play D&D, &D, like, things like advantage, even if you want to like help someone, that's the best you can do and it doesn't stack. So like it's only like the most like collaboration you can really get is between two people and that's a bit. So I like mm. that we could all be a big team here. Um, mm. Everything you're saying about teamwork, Emma also believes. So, <laughs> um, Emma is me. <laughs> I don't know if I said my name at the beginning, I just realized. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I really enjoyed that, actually, that aspect of it. So, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Sweet. And uh, that really brings, uh, that, I, I was just going to say, that brings, like, all the reasons why I love the Mouse Guard is, the camaraderie that it instills in people. Um, it's, it's, it, there's a reason why it's my favorite role playing game to teach new, uh, not only D&D players, but uh, new role players, honestly. Mm. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Oh, Is there I anybody love else it. that has, has, a, has a thing to say? Do you all think Samson will hug you in the end? Samson, <laughs> no. I hope he's my friend. No, I want to. I want him to be my friend. Oh, courage! Uh, I am. Oh man, there's so much I want to tell you, but I can't. Let's uh, go around. Give ourselves our outros. Tell us who you are, where you will be found, and anything else you feel is in pertin in imperative to uh, this last few tidbits. Elf, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Distracted Elf. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Distracted Elf or on Twitter at Distracted Elf. Uh, if you want to see more of me today, 
Um, I am on in two hours over on twitch.tv slash dnd for Dragon Heist with uh, a bunch of cool people, so you should, you know, go watch that. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Dragon Heist is so good. Oh man, I still need to read through it. Let's yeah, go no, down I to played it on a, that Mr. Mossman. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Guillermo. I am Will underscore Night Three on Twitter. I am still hunting for Night One and Two. I haven't been able to find them yet, so I'm still number three. <laughs> uh, you can find me there talking D and D stuff and random stuff, and you can find me in my house. But that would be weird. So don't do that. <laughs> I will be soon on Capricorn Koros uh, Twitch channel playing Strahd and I will be tomorrow I believe uh, on Ravnica on Sir Stalwart's Twitch channel where I play a barbarian and I do barbarian things uh, and next Monday here being a mouse doing mouse things that's it that's me mouse team <laughs> squad no. I'm gonna try and run Strahd for my friends back home because um, they want to play evil characters. So it's thought, tough. Oh, might as well. Let's pick a place which is already full of horrible things to <laughs> make, <laughs> make that worse. The best way just to play let them thrive. Let, let them thrive. Is, <laughs> just play evil like it's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All oh, uh, where can we find you, Misha? Uh, so I'm BG Gameworks on Twitter. Um, you can follow me at uh, my blog, blah, 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 blackgirlgameworks.com. Uh, I'll be streaming next, I think, Wednesday with uh, Dungeon Commander uh, playing Mutants in the Night, which is super cool, and everybody should go and buy it. Um, and... Do you say... Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll have my game out soon-ish. So. Amazing. Oh man, I know that feel. <laughs> and then we come to... Emma! Hello! Yes, um, I'm Emma. Um, sadly, this is the only stream game that I'm in because I'm in my final year of university and I have time for just this <laughs> um, outside of writing a dissertation. Um, but if you want to find more of me or um, see what kind of procrastination I'm doing, you can find me on um, Emma Emma, um, A E M A underscore Emma on Twitter. Um, I also do um, freelance character design and Dungeons and Dragons group illustrations, character illustrations. Uh, so if you want to see your characters come to life, then, well, on a 2D screen, <laughs> then, um, yeah, I'd love to them for you or if you just want to see some of my work you can come to my twitter and please give me all your compliments <laughs> my fuel it gets me through the dark times <laughs> um, compliment away and i am four there you go i am the mouth man i am the mouse man you may find me on the forefront and all the forefront <laughs> i play D and D and also Mouse Guard and other things. Um, I am playing the fourth edition of Dungeons and Dragons on Sunday. That's right. We're going to that old, pleasant, delightful time when everybody had daily powers and it was awesome. Uh, we're playing in a World War One themed campaign uh, within a fantasy setting, and it is they. It is I. That should be the hook alone. I'm not going to tell you anything else. I also uh, do a talk show with uh, Abigator Frenzy called Queers and Quagoths, where we talk about the monsters of the Monster Manual uh, and how you can uh, use their stories to bring diverse and queer-related characters and storylines to your campaign, as well as just freak out about, oh. you know, that I, I, what, what shade of lipstick I'm wearing because I have a whole <laughs> rigmarole right here. Like, I recently yes. actually like, no, we're not talking about makeup. Right? It's not makeup stream. I would love beauty. to talk about makeup. Um, I love makeup. Just so you We know. can totally <laughs> come up with I a makeup stream though. <laughs> makeup RPG. Uh, I just... Oh my gosh! 
There's an idea for that somewhere. Will, stop us! We have too much power! We have too <laughs> much power. Um, I'm, there is. I'm also making an Animorphs uh, RPG in, uh, for, in Blades in the Dark, so keep an eye on my Twitter, because I will be releasing various updates to the playbooks and rules, and gosh darn, you should just read Animorphs, because it is better than you thought it was. That is all I have for you today. I am going to lean back and allow what happen will happen to will encounter roleplay, tabletop loot dice, um, laugh, love, Lindy, Animorphs, uh, Tobias deserved better. Um, <laughs> who's your favorite Animorph, everybody? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Sorry to end the stream this way. Obviously, ah, Tobias. Obviously. My, my favorite anime is Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> that was one yeah, I think Animorphs <laughs> were, going... I was already in college when they started, so I'm probably not your best. Is Teenage, Mutant Ninja, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> I'm afraid not. I am afraid is, not. Is Pikachu a- no. <laughs> well, let's wave our goodbyes, everybody. My thanks, friends. Bye, guys. Have a Bye. courageous week. <laughs>